This question gives us a difference equation where we have the input and the output related. So we have x, fn, and y, fn related. So we have delayed versions of y, fn. So from the difference equation, we're asked to find the transfer function. So how do you find the transfer function from a difference equation? Well, the first step is to move everything to the z domain. So you would find the z transform of each of these terms. So you'd find the z transform of y of n, x of n, and then the delayed versions of x of n. So y of n would simply give you y of z. x of n would give you x of z. Then you have a scaled version or a scaled and a delayed version of y of z. So the z to the minus 1 is because we're delayed by one sample. And z to the minus 2 is because we're delayed by two samples. So the question is asking for h of z. And h of z is simply... Um, the ratio y of z divided by x of z. So we need to rearrange this so that all our y's are on the same side. So we can say it's y of z into 1 minus a half z to the minus 1 minus a quarter z to the minus 2 equals x of z. And because we're looking for the transfer function, the final step, we can say h of z equals y of z over x of z equals 1 over 1 minus And you can leave it at that, or to get rid of these negative powers, you could multiply by z squared over z squared. You could, you could even multiply by 4z squared over 4z squared to get rid of these fractions. So that would give you, um, as a final answer, 4z squared <clears throat> over 4z squared minus 2z minus 1. So that would be your final answer for the transfer function. The next part of the question asks for the z transform of a particular discrete time signal. So we're given x of n, and we're asked for the z transform. So that simply means x of z. So we can apply the definition of the z transform, and we can take each of these terms one by one, and multiply them by z to the power minus n. So you'll have 1 times z to the minus 0, plus 0 times z to the minus 1, plus 1 times z to the minus 2, etc. And that simplifies to 1 plus z to the minus 2. So that's all you would need to get the full mark for part B. Now, part C says, using the transfer function, and the input signal, find the output signal. So using this transfer function and this input signal, find the output signal. So if we write the output, y of z, as the product of the transfer function times the input, all we need to do is to put that there and that there. So 
the output would be simply um, what was it four z squared over four z squared plus two z plus sorry minus one multiplied by one plus z to the minus two. Now we can't leave it like that, we need to simplify it. So you would simply multiply this by both terms in the numerator and you would have 4z squared plus 4 over 4z squared minus 2z minus 1. So that would be your final answer for the output. So remember the question says find the z transform of the corresponding output signal. So that means y of z. Now moving on to part D. D isn't related to the previous sections and it's asking for the approximation for the second derivative of an input signal. So the second derivative of an input signal. So if you have an input signal x of t, the second derivative will be d squared x of t over dt squared. Now obviously for uh, a discrete time signal, we can't use t because a discrete time signal isn't a function of t, it's a function of n. So we need to approximate. So what we're after is a double approximation. We need to approximate the um, first derivative and then the first derivative off the first derivative because let, let's write it out like this. So d squared x of t over dt squared is d by dt of dx of t by dt. So it's the derivative of the derivative. Let me make this slightly finer. Now, we know that we can approximate the first derivative as um, a ratio. So we can say that's approximated to x of n minus x of n minus 1 divided by t. And then what we want is the first derivative of that. So now we are approximating. So remember this is a linear process, so we can take the derivative of each of those terms. So now that simplifies to um, let, let's write it out in full. So it's d by dt of x of n minus d by dt of x of n minus 1. And we can simplify that and say that's, well, we're not simplifying, we're approximating each of these derivatives. We can say that's x of n minus x of n minus 1 over t. And this is x of n minus 1 minus x of n minus 1 minus 1, that's x by n minus 2, divided by t squared. I'm dividing by t twice, so hence the, d squared, the t squared. So we can now write this out as Y 
1 over t squared x of n. Now, x of n minus 1 features twice here, so minus 2 times x of n minus 1. Mi minus minus is plus. x of n minus 2. So as a difference equation, that is my final answer. I can't simplify that anymore. But the question says, find the approximation, and we've done that, and its corresponding block diagram. So now we need to draw a block diagram from this difference equation. So if you look carefully, the difference equation r relates, if, if we call this y of n, it relates the output to the input, a delayed version of the input, and a further delayed version of the input. So we can draw the block diagram like this. We can say the input is x of n, the output is y of n, and if we go backwards, we have this multiplication here. It's, you divide by t squared, so it's as if we're multiplying by 1 over t squared. And before that, we have three things being added together. So we have this term, this term, and this term being added together. So we have x of n, a delayed version of x of n, and a further delayed version of x of n. So let's draw two delay blocks. So one, that's a delay block with a t in it, and another, that's a delay block with a t in it. And we have something like this. So after the first delay block, we have x of n minus 1. And after the second delay block, we have x of n minus 2. So I can label this bit here x of n minus 2. And that's that. What I now need is x of n minus 1 multiplied by a factor of minus 2. So I can... So what I have right here is x of n minus 1. That's right there. So I can take a little branch there and multiply that by minus 2. So the output here is minus 2 x of n minus 1. which is that. And the last thing we want is x of n. And x of n is right here. So I can connect this like this all the way through. And that's simply x of n. And that's that. So there we have the block diagram. It takes the input x of n, it gives me the output y of n. I have this scaling factor, 1 over t squared. I have the minus 2 x of n minus 1, and I have x of n minus 2. So that's one way to draw the diagram, and there, there will be others. 
So that's your final answer for part D. Now for part E, it's completely, completely um, uh, separate from the previous parts. It's asking for the output of a system with a given impulse response and a given input. So we could say, well, the output is just the convolution of the input and the impulse response. But because they want the output in the Z domain, we could just say, well, the output y of z is equal to x of z times h of z. We can do that. And because we have the table of z transforms, we can find x of z, and we can find h of z. So each of these, we can just look up from a table of z transforms. So, what's the z transform of n? So it's a discrete unit ramp. What's the z transform of a discrete unit ramp? It's simply, if you look this up in, this, in, in the z transform table, it's z over z minus 1 squared. And the z transform of this parabolic function, discrete parabolic function n squared, is z times z plus 1 over z minus 1 cubed. So to find the output, we simply multiply this by that. So the output is z squared times z plus 1 over z minus 1. You've got power 2, power 3, so it's to the power 5. That can't be simplified, so that there is your final answer, because it said find the output, so we've just found it. That's your final answer.